Good morning. I am going to continue on my discussion about uh, various aspects of the van. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I built the bed and why I built it the way I did. Okay, so first of all, let me just talk about the, the layout of this van a little bit and why I ended up putting the bed where I did. I've actually had a lot of comments about that on the, on the channel. People have said, why don't you move the bed to the side? Why don't you tilt it up? Why don't you do that, this, that, or the other thing? Well, I, you know, I really went through all of that same thought process when I was doing the layout of this van. It was really kind of a, a, a struggle to kind of figure out where the best place for the bed was going to be and how I was going to do it. When I first bought this van, <clears throat> I have earlier videos archived that show this, and I probably should, should show some of those at some point. But um, you'll notice way in the corner there, I have a, an eye bolt. And then over here, buried somewhere, well, it's buried in here somewhere, is another eye bolt, believe it or not. It's behind there, I think. Um, and, and then here's one right here, and then there's one over in that corner, too, as you can see way over there. Okay, I put those eye bolts on here because when I first got the van, I thought, hey, I'm just going to stretch a hammock across here, and that's it. That's all I'm going to need. Well, I tried that for a while. And I tell you, I, I learned real fast that I can't sleep full time in a hammock. <laughs> They're just not that comfortable for me. Okay, now here's the location of the bed. You've seen this before. And again, people have often asked me, well, don't you have to crawl over the bed to get into the cab? Isn't that kind of awkward? And it's kind of in the way of of uh, getting through because you know I I have these doors that open like that and I can get into the cab but let me tell you that's that was something that I wondered about too I mean that's a that's a fair uh, comment and if you haven't actually built a van like this and you you're just thinking about it in your mind you know it things seem to be um, a certain way when you think about it, but then when you actually do the actual thing, <laughs> you come to another level of understanding about it. I've had this discussion with other van owners too, and people that build things and design things. You know, you, when you come up with an idea for something, what you have to do is get the idea and then stop. Don't just jump into the idea and, and do it right away. Stop and think about it for a while. You know, if you have a great idea, just let it set for two or three days and let it cook a little bit. Because what will happen is, and this has happened to me many times, is you jump into an idea right away and you find out that, no, that's, you know, once you, you find another level of understanding when you actually get into the, the build part of it the rest of the idea sometimes bubbles up and then you realize whoops you've just wasted a lot of time and and that's that's just a a, a common uh challenge when you're designing and, and building something how are you going to get as close to the real design and as you want without wasting a lot of time and material to get there well the bed is one example of that for me I think that I thought this out very thoroughly. It and I'm the more I the more I uh, use it, the more I realize that this was the best solution for this particular space. And I'm very glad I didn't put the bed over here, or that I didn't have any kind of situation where I had to manipulate the bed and you know, like fold it down or something like that. I don't. I just did not want that. I wanted the bed to be ready to go. Just like it is right there. All I got to do is pull the covers down, basically, and get in, you know. Now, the compromise, when you're living in a small space, 
obviously you've got to compromise with some things. I mean, it's just not a big 2,000 square foot house here, you know? You got to do some things that are a little different. So to get in and out through the cab, yeah, that's a little bit of a, I wouldn't say it's a hassle. It's just kind of something that's, I have to put up with. It's just one of the one of the daily deals, like walking up and down stairs, okay? It's about that level of annoyance, if you want to call it an annoyance. It's just one of those things, it's one of the compromises I decided was worth the compromise in order to have the bed right here. And there's many reasons why I like the bed right here. One is, I like to sit on the bed and just look out like this. See? Uh, it's great, I can lay in the bed like this, you know, and look out that way, and I got this whole back door open. Um, I've got this whole space here that I can walk around in, and I can still, I can actually put stuff in here sometimes, and that's come in very handy. Um, and it's, it's always ready to go. There's no manipulation of the bed. Now getting through to the, to the cab, Real easy, I just, see, I'm in right now. That wasn't hard, was it? It's, it's, it's very easy. Crawl in like this, yeah, I have to duck a little bit, go on my knees, big deal. It's not a big hassle, really. You have to bend and exercise a little bit. There's nothing wrong, you know, with having things in your life <laughs> that, that force you to exercise and, and maybe stretch and bend a little bit. That's actually good for you. I think I'll take a couple minutes just to talk about this this bed cover that I have. I really like this design that I got. This is a, a very unique piece of textile here. I bought this in a shop in Langley, Washington. It's imported from Kazakhstan. And it, what this is, is it's, the, it's, a, it's a handmade textile. It's about 100 years old. And it was made by uh, Kazakhstani uh, women who you know, they weave these kinds of textiles as part of the interior wall of a yurt. And I thought it was very appropriate to have something like that in a, in a van, you know, living a nomadic lifestyle, kind of have a little bit of a kinship with nomads from the past. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the bed apart and show you how it's built. Okay, so I pulled the bedspread off and I just want to show you what kind of what, what I have for a mattress. Now this is one of the things I'm going to improve on. I, I want to get a better mattress. This was kind of a quick solution. It works fine. It's two layers of three inch memory foam that I got from Walmart. You know, and, and this bottom one has the holes in it. And I just sandwich them together and then I put one uh, cover over them. And it works fine. It's very comfortable. Um, I think that uh, I'm learning though that I need a little bit different mattress just for my my back and everything. Um, but for the most part, I'm pretty comfortable with this. I've never had any kind of mold or mildew problem under the bed. It breathes just fine. There's never been any problem with that. Okay, now I have the mattress removed so that you can see the, the, the boards, the, the platform that holds the bed. And what these are is just uh, pine boards that are cut to length. Okay, so I've uh, pulled the boards back to show you what's uh, underneath in terms of structure. What I have here is uh, these boards span the whole length of the bed and I've built a ledge on each side uh, that supports the ends and it's got vertical supports right there. This this ledge is tied into the side walls. This is supported from the from the ground, from the floor. And I've got a similar situation on the other side. And then uh, to support in the middle, the span is a little too long. It's about it's about uh, six foot seven inches I think from end to end inside. Without the the insulation in the walls. It's almost seven feet wide in here, which is quite uh, enough length for a bed. But um, I, I built some horses. See, and the, the horse is just sitting here. It's It just sits here like that. It holds the boards in. And when I take, take it apart, those bottom pieces 
that bottom piece comes out. So this whole thing can fit up in here too, along with these pieces. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now because I got stuff up there, but uh, you'll just have to trust me. It does fit up there. Um, so as you see, I use the underside of the bed to, to store stuff. There's my power center right there. That's another video. I know people have been asking about that. Got a 1500 watt inverter, charge controller and all that, but that's the subject for another video. Um, one of the things that, one of the other reasons I put the bed here is because if you buy yourself a U-Haul truck, one of the things you gotta consider is that they, they don't come with a, a spare tire. So you're gonna have to run out right away and get a spare tire. And I really had anxiety about that, just driving the thing home because I didn't have a spare tire in it yet. You know, so I had to go, you know, like uh, the next day I had to go get a, a spare tire from someplace. And and uh, the only place I could put, find to put it where it wasn't in the way is right here. And so it takes up a lot of space under the bed there. Um, as you see, organization is one of the things you deal with, uh, but that's what the underside of beds are for, right? Okay, I'm gonna hurry up and cover up this bed because I know that people are gonna start commenting on all of the details of things that I have under the bed. So I gotta hurry up and cover it up before that happens. So before I put the, the last board back in place, I just wanted to comment about the, the end piece here. This is a, you know, this board pops out too. And and um, I just taped a, a piece of sheet on here as a, as a skirt. Now I think that I could talk about some improvements. And as I was, I was uh, commenting on earlier, you know, Sometimes you don't see the elegant design until you're <clears throat> until you've started and actually started building something. So, you know, I think I came really close to the to what was ideal. Uh, you know, by thinking it through and letting it cook a while, and then I then I realized that I needed to have the bed right here. But there's a few minor changes I would make on a future build to make it even better. And one of the things that <clears throat> that I would improve on is um, these cabinet, this cabinet situation seemed like a good idea at first because I thought that these were gonna be closets for storage, right? Well, they became somewhat useful for storage. As you see, I got my guitar in there and uh, <clears throat> then I got some stuff stored down there, but really there's a lot of space here and I could put shelves or something in there, but I don't know. The thing that, that I wish that I could do, and this is something I may improve on, I may just do this in the van, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to, to make this improvement really, but uh, I, would build, I would build a pocket door that's inside of a pocket instead of having them exposed like this. Um, and I would, I would make it closer to the, to the bulkhead. And then I would move the bed right up so it's flush with the wall <clears throat> and there's no, no sliding door. So that that would make the bed kind of into a, a bed and a couch at the same time. I could lean against there, put a pillow up and sit there and a couple of people could sit here. And uh, that would make it even better. That, that's just one thing that, that uh, I, I didn't think through thoroughly enough when I was in the process and uh, I know that I would do it differently next time. Well, thanks for watching this video. Again, I have a great deal of appreciation for my audience. You know, the bed is probably one of the most important things in your rig when you think about it, at least for me it is. Knowing that I have a good place to sleep every night is a big deal. If you got that licked in your life, you've covered a lot of ground. Just knowing you have a good bed to sleep in that's safe, out of the rain, and uh, it's always there. Not a bad deal. Thanks for watching.